Hello, Fiber Warriors and friends. Hello, hello, hello. Uh, with me today is a producing partner, lead producer, really, of this film, Pallavi Sastry. Welcome. Hello. Nice to see everybody. Well, I can only see Nick, but, you know, I'm assuming more people are here, hopefully. <laughs> well, and if you are here, give us a howdy or a wave, a shout out, something in the chat. Uh, and if you have any questions as we go today, because today is a really important day. Uh, it's an exciting day, and we're actually here to celebrate it, which is the launch of community screenings with our partner, Kinema. And you might be wondering, what is that? And we're going to get right into it. And we're going to give you the sort of 101 of hosting screenings, because so many of you have, have asked. On our website, we had this um, form that you could fill out for several years, honestly, of, I want to host a screening. I'm interested in hosting a screening. Well, guess what? Today's the day, it's here, you can actually do it. And we're gonna go in depth about it. But also, if you um, miss this or you need to go back, we also on our website have an FAQ that really dives into all of this with our partnership with Kinema. But so first question for you, Paula, because I'm gonna let her do all the talking because she's the smart one about all these things. <laughs> not, not me, this is not my vein of gold. Uh, <laughs> The first question for you is, what is Kinema exactly? Yeah, so Kinema is a, um, a, a wonderful film, um, independent film platform that literally aggregates and takes care of all of the hard elements of, of licensing and showing a movie, right? So there's tech involved where you have to find out, figure out how to stream it and how do you receive the film and how do how do we deliver the film to you and the legal aspects of of um, showing a movie um, and uh, all of those things are sort of wrapped up into this one platform. Um, so it's essentially like you know, just logging onto any other service like Vimeo or Facebook or any other streaming service, but you get to host your own screen uh, screenings through this platform. So it's the easiest way for anybody anywhere in the world to now screen invisible for whoever they want. I love that you're saying that it's easy because I think for me, when I get this idea of like host a screening, that, I mean, my hair goes, ah, you know what I mean? Like, and so the fact that it's all in one place, that it's super simple to use, that it's, it's something that is um, done by people all over the world. Um, I love that. So yeah. what kinds of, screenings can people host? Yeah. So this is what's exciting, right? And I mentioned anybody, anywhere for anyone, right? So right. there's three types of main screenings. Now, a traditional screening that you think of is something that's held in a movie theater or in a location that you, a, a, a event space that you book. So there is an option to definitely do that. You can host an event in person and do an in-person screening of Invisible. And that is whoever, you know, chooses to do something like that. It might be, you know, for example, we know of a couple of people who have fibromyalgia organizations that are hosting events for awareness month, and they're choosing to do an in-person screening in their town or city. Now that's one option. Um, the other option is a virtual broadcast. So that's a live virtual screening that you set a time and a date, and you can blast it out to your followers, your email list, your social media um, accounts, and you can um, essentially play the film on like, you know, it's like having your own little streaming channel for that movie, for the movie, once you set the date and time. Um, and uh, and people can log on or just click on the link that you provide, um, uh, you know, if they're invited or if they buy tickets and um, the watch it via your link that you've created, your screening event that you've created. And the cool thing about a virtual broadcast is that you can also choose to do a um, uh, an interactive, you know, uh, like what we're doing right now, Nick, mm -hmm. like we, they could do this on a virtual broadcast, do a Q and a, or if they want to have a discussion amongst whoever watched the film, they want to invite experts on, they can do that via a virtual broadcast. Um, and then the last option is the most flexible option, which is an on demand, which is, um, exactly what it sounds like. So, uh, similar to what we did, um, on Vimeo, where anybody could go and rent the film um, online and watch it how, whenever they want within that one week when rental period, 
This allows anybody to set their own on-demand screening. So let's say, you know, Nick, you wanted to share this with um, some of your colleagues, right? Like you wanted people, to, you wanted to share this movie. Hey, I made this movie. I would love for you all to watch it. And you could set up an on-demand screening and say, it's open from April 15th through April 21st or however long you want to set that window for. And you can, uh, your guests can then um, log on and watch it anytime within that period. So it's a fully virtual on-demand screening whenever your guests want to watch. So I love that there's flexibility in this, right? That it's yeah. not just one way, that there's multiple ways in which, you know, it could even be like, let's get a group of friends together and do Exactly, this, right? like, yeah. Like, let our support group, our, you know, um, our advocacy group are like, there's so many ways in which you could gather. Yeah. And, you know, now more than ever, mm -hmm. I think we really need community. Right. Yeah. And, and, and quite I, frankly, like I, sorry to cut you off, but like, uh, you know, quite frankly, like we, we were most interested in looking for, a, and I think you can, you can agree with me here is like, uh, we were most interested in finding a flexible option for the hundreds and thousands of support groups that we have been, you know, loosely in contact with or interacted with over the years of making this movie. We're like, how do we allow them to I'm watch it? About. So if you yeah. are a support group, please let us know. We want we want to support you in this as well. We're just yeah. we're still learning about groups, you know, yeah. even though we've been on this journey for several several years. Um, so I just put in the chat. Um, how to set it up, how to, how to set up a screening, a link for it. You can go there and click on it after this is over uh, and uh, get all, get, and, and, and find all the information there. But yeah. I know that the, the, what's going to come up immediately for people is how much is this going to cost me? Like, what does this cost? Yeah. Great question. Again, there's a couple of flexible options there too. Now there is a way for it to cost you nothing to set up. A screening, right? Obviously, I mentioned before, it's anybody's prerogative if they want to do an in-person event. Um, and, you know, if you want to book a, a venue for that, that would definitely be, you know, your choice and, and up to you how much you want to spend on that. We would have no say in that. And that's the other thing I want to also point is like, once you book a screening, we have no say in anything that happens. It's your screening, right? No matter how you do it. Now, um, the way that it costs no money to uh, set up a screening is if you make it a ticketed screening, right? You want to sell tickets to your, any type of screening that I mentioned before. You can sell tickets on for your on-demand. You can sell tickets to the virtual broadcast. You can sell tickets to your in-person. Um, and in that way, there's no cost, upfront cost in setting it up. There is a 45-45 split with us and then a 10% service charge for using the platform out of your ticket sales once your screening is over. Right. So um, that that is, you know, the easiest way for it to cost nothing for any group of people or any host to set up a screening. And let's talk about the why of the 45 that comes back to us. Because yeah. I think it's important for people to realize this is not we're not taking money from you all. We're not we're not going to the bank. We're not buying houses in Aspen with with this film. Why? Yeah. And I'm sure you could speak to this too, but essentially we um, were looking for the easiest way for us to make the film available and also protect the film. So part of it is, you know, the security of the film um, and, and everything that went into making it, but it's also, we put in personal time, money and um, investors time and money. So yeah. we do owe them back. Yeah. And um, <laughs> be very clear with people. I think it's really important for people to understand that we actually owe money. Yeah. To people, yeah. to investors. Yeah. And yeah. so, as a as a business, we the film is a business ultimately, mm -hmm. and we have a fiduciary responsibility to those investors to get them paid ultimately mm -hmm. for the investment that they that they did in the film first and foremost, first yeah. and foremost, and so. There is a responsibility in a, to have finances come in, to money come in as well. That's important. Yeah, to, in order to pay them back, in order, in order to, pay, to them pay them back. Them. 
Yeah. But again, I want to reiterate that, um, of, you know, that's why there's so many great flexible options yes. here. So if you choose to do a virtual screening, you choose to do an on-demand screening, you're only opening yourself up to literally anybody to attend your screening, right? Yeah. You could, we, once, and we also know whenever somebody, um, uh, schedules a screening on Kinema, we we get notified about that, right? Mm -hmm. So we will share your screening in our list. We'll post it on social media and try our best in, you know, obviously like, you know, we're, we're always fielding information, but like we're going to do our best to post about screenings that we know are happening to support you all, right? Mm -hmm. So it's a great way for any foundation, any group to use it as a fundraiser. That was um, going to be my next question. Can you yeah. use it as a fundraiser? Speaking of fiduciary, speak, speaking of finances, yeah. is that is that possible? Is that okay? Absolutely. And we encourage it yeah. because the, the movie was made to be a resource, right? We want yeah. you to use the resource. We want you to do it. And we want you to um, use it and make the, the screening your own make it align with whatever your foundation's needs are and what your cause is. Um, it doesn't just have to be for fibromyalgia organizations. We know healthcare facilities and he healthcare nonprofits that are that are most likely going to use the film as a tool. It is meant to be a resource. And so it should absolutely be and, used for fundraising. And for anybody who has seen the film, you will know that it could be for, you know, any chronic illness ultimately mm -hmm. that there are that there are takeaways from it now it is fibromyalgia based but also other uh wellness programs uh for any chronic illness month fibromyalgia, fibromyalgia awareness month is coming up like one month away just saying you know there's lots of ways in which it, it can be beneficial for your community your group your audience um to be involved so do you have to use Kinema? Is there another way to do this? Um, I actually, before we move on to it, move on to that, um, yeah. I actually did want to clarify. Now, the question was, does it cost any money to set it up, right? So yeah. if you ticket your screening, it costs no money to set it up. There is another option where there is, um, if you wanted to make your screening um, free for whoever attends, then that is when, if you make that choice, then you can choose to license the film, right? And so that is a way you could do it. So that is the other option. And that is the way where there would be, depending on the size of your audience, again, it's about the security of the film, right? Um, so Kinema will deliver it to your screening virtually, however you do it. Um, and if you pay a licensing fee, again, it is dependent on the size of your um, of your audience, then, um, then you can make your screening free for your guests. So it really just depends on what's important to you and what you want to achieve from your screening. Okay, that's, re yeah. that's really important. That's really good that you that you uh, said that. Yeah. Uh, but does it have to be on Kinema? Is there another yeah. way? Yeah. So another reason why we're so excited about Kinema is because as independent filmmakers, um, and Nick will tell you this, um, a lot of times it takes a large staff to make things happen, right? And we, first of all, don't have a large staff because we don't have a large budget. Yeah. <laughs> so um, the manpower and the technical know-how involved in manually setting up screenings globally and worldwide was giving us a lot of heartache because we wanted it to be possible and we didn't know how to make it possible. Um, technically delivering the film, they're really large files movies are um, delivering it and you know then being in constant contact with hosts around the world to try and help them figure out how to show it. I mean, we really looked into so many different ways. Um, and this was essentially, a, a, for indie filmmakers, I think it's a godsend. I agree. I couldn't agree more. Yeah. They just don't have the, the resources and um, the man and woman power yeah. in order to do it, you know, to yeah. create to without without something like this without kinema we wouldn't be able to 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 have this offering to be very honest i, I mean the legal of it all like we would have yeah. to be we'd have to have a like a lawyer on retainer to like and have all of you sign yeah. certain contracts to show the movie and we don't have to do that anymore <laughs> yeah 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 and i think i i want to 
also to be said that the filmmakers can be part of the process as well. Mm -hmm. That um, we can come virtually as well as in person. There are some options to bring us. There are additional costs for that. Um, but we are available, both myself, Rose, who's part of the film, Tammy, who is a, an expert. Um, there are many ways um, in which you can involve the team as well in the process. Uh, any other, any, anything else, Pallavi, to, to sort of wrap this up that you feel is important or um, maybe to close out the discussion? Um, yeah, you know, I think um, we just want to make it clear again that this is meant to be a resource and we really want you to use it. You know, this is, yeah. um, we, we, especially with all the, the Awareness Month events coming up that we know about, um, it's, we, we hope that this is a fundraising tool for people. We really do. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and, you know, if you have questions, you can always email the our email address at invisiblefilmteam at gmail. And again, our website, invisible-film.com has all of this information. Um, I will point out um, that for, in order to make this easier for people, we made um, specific tutorials for each type of screening, which is also on the website, which um, Nick already mentioned. So please do click around. Um, there's, there's, I, I, yeah, I'm I'm just thrilled that this is this is out there now. <laughs> yeah, me too. I, I'm like I couldn't be more excited about it. I hope that you all share it with your communities, with your groups, with your fundraisers. With you know, I mean, this is why we made the film is for th for this to happen, for these conversations to happen, for the information to be shared, for the stories to be told, and for you all to be able to use use it as a tool in your awareness and with your community and with your families. I, I can't tell you the number of people that have uh, DM'd me on Instagram to say, you know, I, I shared this with my husband or I shared this, I shared the film with my friends and they finally get it. They finally mm -hmm. understand. And I think that's, as we come into awareness month, um, that's so important. It's just so important. Yeah. And really. Also yeah. Why we created the film. Absolutely. And like, you know, that's, I've heard, you know, from a couple of people like via DMs and whatnot that, oh, I'm going to, you know, I, I have a, a family reunion coming up, somebody said. And like, I think yeah. I could show this. I was like, that's perfect. Like yeah. I, I'm a family, friends gathering, like in your backyard, like we have friends come to our house and watch movies in the backyard. I might license Invisible to show it at my house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, beautiful. Thank so, you all so very much. And again, if you have any questions, let us know on the website. I've also put the Kinema link in the chat. And um, we you can also leave questions here that we'll come back and answer. So thank you, Pallavi, for being here. I know you're taking a little break. <laughs> and that's going to be a good thing for you. And I am excited for you on your next project. Um, Want to give anybody a, a little shout out about what your next project is? Oh, oh, thank you. Um, yeah. So I, I mean, indie filmmakers, right? We're always juggling multiple projects. So yeah. Um, uh, yeah. So I do have another movie coming out um, called Land of Gold, which is a narrative. It's not a documentary. It's a scripted feature. Um, which I also am in, um, in addition to producing it, um, and with my lovely sister, who's my producing partner, um, and was our associate producer on Invisible. Um, and uh, so we have a movie called Land of Gold coming out um, on HBO Max in May. Beautiful. Can't wait to see <laughs> yeah. it. I'm excited. Okay. Yeah. Thank you all so much. Have a great day.